A continuación presentamos el devocional diario por el pastor José Manuel Sierra y traducido al inglés. En español se emite de lunes a viernes a las 9 horas en las Islas Canarias y queda grabado en nuestros canales de Facebook y YouTube. Debajo en la descripción de este vídeo encontrará el enlace para los devocionales en español. Good morning, my dear brethren. May the Lord bless you very richly. In this occasion, from the Guatemala City, recording for all of you this devotional and wishing that it will always be a blessing for all of you. We're going to be going to the letter of the, the Ephesians, specifically chapter 4, as of verse 22, the word of the Lord says the following that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Once again, we find ourselves with Paul inspired by the Holy Spirit telling us the things that we have to do to live victorious Christian lives and in order to please our God, the God that we love, the God that has transformed our lives, the God has forgiven our sins, renew ourselves to get rid of the old nature and begin to internalize the great biblical truth that can take us and lead us to victorious and free life and so many other things that will help us to grow, to mature and above all things to please God. We have very clear that we're not in this life to uh, please ourselves, like capricious children always wanting our will to be done, ignoring God's will that is holy, pleasant, and perfect. Our objectives right now have changed radically. We no longer allow ourselves to be dragged or dominate ourselves by the vices we had before, but now our objectives are others. Our objective and essential one is to please and honor our God. But how can we know what God uh, honors God? Where can we acquire that information to be able to know what we have to do, what we have to practice, and what we should never have to do again? Well, as I have always said, that's why we have the sacred the scriptures, the Holy Bible. In this, we will find everything that we need to know what we have to do and what we don't have to do. How we can please God with our words, with our actions, with our thoughts, with our lifestyle, and what things we have to discard and leave behind once and for all so that we don't continue practicing things that in the end we thought they were correct, but in the light of the Word of God we have realized that it's not uh, pleasing to God, but they are abominations in the eyes of our Lord. To renew our mind, to fill our mind not with bad thoughts or bad attitudes, but with thoughts that are good, thoughts that are pleasant, in this way to remove all suspicion from us, all bad way of thinking, decisions that led us to commit tremendous mistakes and abominable mis sins. All of those things can be overcome. And I have always said that people have not changed because they didn't have the opportunity to do so. But I also know that there is a lot of people that have not changed because they don't want to put in practice the Word of God. But that is not our case, really. Our goal right now is to please God, putting in practice His commandments, and as we have read this morning, to get rid of the old man. As if we were taking off a piece of clothing that is dirty, that is giving a bad image, and we want to dress properly for Him. We want to dress like Christ, to speak like Him, to think like Him, to act like Him. We also have read this morning uh, that we all have a past life in, and there is a, a before and an after in every life after we have met Christ, after being born again. That before is characterized by lies, by insults, by blasphemies, uh, essentially by sin. But now in this new life that we have, what we want to do 
is what God would do, what Christ would do in our place. Bless families, education that are glorifying the Lord, decisions that are wise, leaving behind everything that is negative, everything that is carnal, everything that is uh, vain glory and that is useless for anything. It is a discipline and a daily practice, but with the help of the Lord, we are going to be able to achieve it. In fact, that's what we're doing, getting closer to the Lord every day, pleasing Him and honoring Him, and above all things, being useful people in the hands of the Lord. Not going back to those pagan practices that we used to do, those idolatry acts, those acts of superstition based on fear, but now with confidence, with faith, with fully certainty that He is with us, looking at Him alone, knowing that in Christ I have a victory that is guaranteed. That is why, once again, I want you to pray with me at this time and ask the Lord everything. I know that there are many things and it's a daily discipline. I know that it's a constant and permanent effort, but we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength if our attitude is the right one. To get rid, to leave behind everything that is incorrect, We are going to be able to please God, to grow and mature to the image of Christ. Let's pray. Blessed Heavenly Father, thank you for giving you this morning for the privilege that you give us to be in this beautiful country. From here, from this Guatemala City, we pray and cry out to you, asking for wisdom, that that growth is notorious and palpable, that you will remove from us all carnality, all of those things that do not glorify or please you. We present our lives on this day with thanksgiving in your hands, knowing that with you we have an, a certain victory. Help us to live in holiness, in order and obedience, leaving behind what is not pleasing to you and obeying your word. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. My dear brother, brethren, greetings from Guatemala City. We're, we're going to be here one week. In this event that we know is going to be of great blessing for those attending. And also we will do everything possible to record and share the testimonies, the meetings and the songs and share them with you so that you will also enjoy with us. May the Lord bless you and enjoy this day. And let's reflect around Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24. And we're going to try to make an effort to put them in practice. May the Lord bless you, my dear brethren.